Hey guys, it's Shaylin. I'm here to do another writing video. So today's video is just going to be a writing update. Very chill. I like to do these every couple months to just catch up. I love hearing from you guys in the comments about what you're working on. I did do a writing update semi-recently where I just went through all my projects and what they're all about. If you're curious about more detail on the stuff I'm writing, I will leave a link to that. But today I'm just going to chat about how writing has been going and the stuff I've been working on. Last year, basically right when I finished Holding a Ghost, I experienced the worst writing slump maybe of my life because other writing slumps, slumps that I've experienced, maybe they were bad, they lasted only a couple months. This one I would say went on for like almost a year. And even though there were periods within that year where I was writing, it took almost a year for me to be able to write regularly with like the amount of energy for writing I had before. The reason this writing slump was so bad is because it wasn't caused by writing. It was just a life burnout and the reason it was so hard to recover from is because when you're in a writing slump where you're burned out on writing, you can just take a break from writing and if you're not on deadline then that's fine, right? But I can't just take a break from these other aspects of my life. As much as I would have loved to pull a my year of rest and relaxation, that was not an option though it was very appealing. Eventually I started writing a little more in the fall of last year but still I could never really keep up momentum. I could work on things for a little bit. I barely drafted anything new from last June to like this May. The only new stuff I drafted was like the beginning of my personal fantasy project, one short story and two flash fictions, and that is it. As I slowly got back into writing, I was able to do more editing work, but I just had no energy to write new stuff. Eventually around May of this year, I started to feel better and I started to feel like I was actually back at capacity reached a point in the spring where it's like finally I had all this energy to write and suddenly I had so much stuff that I wanted to do and it's like I couldn't even really contain it. I have just been jumping from project to project and I've been so excited to write and I've got so much I've been getting so much stuff done. I started writing short stories again which is so exciting and I'm writing regularly and I'm excited about writing and I'm getting ideas and I'm drafting new stuff and that's something that I wasn't doing for about a year and it just feels really great to be back to that. I've talked about my writing process before. I do what I call working in blocks where I work on multiple projects at a time but I do that by identifying specific tasks and then moving from one task to the other and completing a task before I move on. So if I was editing two books it would be like do a draft of this book and finish that draft before moving on to the next thing. First thing that I did was start my Holding a Ghost developmental edits. This was something that I've been wanting to do for ages. I finished the book. It was the last thing I did before I hit this writing slump last year. In my last writing update I talked about how I'd started developmentally editing it and done draft three. Draft three was kind of a mess. Um, it started strong out of the gate and then I kind of crashed and burned. And so now was the time to come back to it and really tackle these developmental edits and kind of do what I wanted to do the first time right? I have an evolving outline which is just a list of every chapter in the book and I use it to keep track of notes and changes and just I add any notes that I have below each chapter. After I had finished draft three um, of the like 90-ish chapters in the book, because the chapters are very short, about half of them I still had questions about. And so I basically didn't read the whole book in order, I basically just looked at these chapters one at a time. And I did it completely non-linearly. So I looked at my draft, I looked at all the chapters, and I picked, to start out, I picked five that I felt like I could fix as quickly as possible. Like I could just do, sit down, implement the changes, and be done. And then after that I moved on to the next five, and slowly but surely I worked my way through the easier chapters to fix all the way up to the more difficult ones until I was left with just the final chapters that were really difficult that either were new chapters that had to be written were just chapters I'd really been struggling with that were like the problem points in the book and I just kind of slowly cleared away the mess until I got to really the trickiest chapters and then eventually I fixed those and I felt like I had a really improved draft from that point. I'd gotten the book to the place that I'd wanted it to be in draft three. So after that I took a little bit of break to work on something else and then I came back to it to do another draft. And this next draft um, I just read through the book linearly. I felt like there were a lot of continuity things that I needed to check based on details that I changed in the last draft and just it needed focus on the, just really focus on the line, flush things out, look for continuity issues, 
and I just carefully read the book and made edits as I went and that was draft five and after that I felt really pleased with the book and felt like it was at a point where I could give it to friends to read. So that was great. I felt like after the end of draft five I've got I'd gotten it to a place that I was really actually happy with and I felt like I'd actually implemented the changes that I wanted. Is it perfect? No, there are still some lingering things but I think I'm really happy with where it's at now. The other thing that I did was draft 10 of Honey Vinegar. These were some edits that I did working with my literary agent. They were really, really minor. It took me longer probably than they should have been given how minor they were. I've worked on this book so much that like making the tiniest adjustment, I'm like scared to do it. You know, I'm like very, it just feels like I'm doing like microsurgery. It kind of felt like it took me a lot longer than I thought it would to do this final draft just because like I went through, I did the first part of the draft which is to go through and like my agent had made small line edits like on typo, noted some typos and stuff. Yeah, there's still typos after draft 10. That's how many typos I made. Going in and doing like the actual developmental stuff was like so small. It was like just adding a few little things but I was like so tentative. But I did that draft. At this point, there's nothing else to say about Honey Vinegar. We are planning on going on submission fairly soon. I've been talking about Honey Vinegar in every writing update I've done since 2018. There's nothing to say at this point because the next thing to say is announcing a book deal. And that's the kind of thing that I can't announce until I can announce it. Basically, we're taking Honey Vinegar off the writing update table. There's nothing more to say at this point. So I wanted to talk about short stories now. Uh, this is actually so exciting for me because I've been talking recently in multiple videos about how I just forgot how to write short fiction. I just forgot how short stories worked. It's like I felt like if I had an idea for a short story I would be able to write it but I just wasn't getting ideas for short stories. Like the ability to get a short fiction idea had left me, it's like I'd forgotten what those concepts felt like. It's not like I needed short stories, but I really like writing short stories. They make me really happy. They're really exciting for me to write. And um, I just really missed writing them and writing them consistently. All of a sudden this changed. Back in the spring, I don't remember exactly the timeline because February until now, I'm filming this in August, is like the same. Thing. So I I don't know when anything happened at any point along that timeline, but at some point I was like, I want to figure out how to write short stories again. I'm going to just order a bunch of short story collections, read a ton of short story collections, reading a couple short stories online a week or reading one collection every month is not enough right now. I need to immerse myself in short fiction and I'm going to do that by just reading six collections almost back to back. I was on Indigo and Goodreads. And I was just trying to find, you know, about five or six short story collections that stood out to me and that I thought I would enjoy. Wow, reading like summaries and write summaries for a short story collection list, kind of like one sentence summaries of all the short stories in the, or of a bunch of the stories in the book, right? So reading just like hundreds of one line summaries of short stories, I think reclicked in my brain what a short story concept looks like because as I was doing this, I jotted down four ideas for short stories. I was reading the template of what a short story idea looks like over and over and over, dozens, maybe like a hundred times. And then my brain was like, yeah, that's what a short story is like. And I jotted down four ideas. One of them I'm not going to talk about because I don't really know if it's going to pan out. Three of them I am actively working on. Since then, I've also got two other ideas. So I have like five, potentially six ideas in the works. So I just feel very excited about that because I think for so long I couldn't come up with ideas for short stories and now I just have like an abundance of them, which is really, really exciting. So the first short story that I started working on, I actually haven't finished yet. There were two ideas that really stood out to me that I felt like would be longer pieces. Of those four ideas that I'd gotten, two of them I felt like would be longer pieces and two of them I felt like would be shorter pieces. And I'm better at writing longer pieces than shorter pieces and short pieces I mean like below 3,000 words and so I felt like I wanted to focus on these longer ideas first. I started the draft and then I kind of put it aside to work on the the next story because the next one kind of just like suddenly I had an idea on where to take it but I'm just not actually working on it because there's some other stories that I'm working on for a contest deadline and this one is not for any kind of deadline so I just kind of put it aside for now. The next story that I wrote I have actually completed a draft and this was so exciting this was the first short story draft that I had completed in months since November and it was just it was so exciting so the next story that I wrote is called you know where your body is buried it is in second person because I feel the need to do that for some reason my logline for this story is a lonely young woman impersonates a missing girl who looks startlingly like her I had so much fun with this story writing this was a lot of fun it really reminded me 
what a short story feels like and how the structure feels like and I was pretty pleased with how it, quite pleased with how it turned out especially after a few rounds of editing I've started submitting it just to one contest at the moment so I'm not submitting it super widely but it was just really nice to like have something that I could just like click submit. I'd done that work in just a few months, getting the concept, writing the whole draft, polishing it to the point that I could submit it. That felt like a huge accomplishment given how much I'd been struggling with short fiction. So the next story that I wrote, I'm currently in the process of editing. It's also one of those initial four ideas that I got. The story is called Landline and my logline for this story is a woman in a failing marriage has an affair with a telemarketer who sells lawnmowers. This story is quite bizarre. It's quite short. My goal is to keep it short and submit it to the CBC prize, so I have to keep it under 2,500 words. When I kind of am struggling, I use contest deadlines to motivate me to be like having that push really does help me, honestly. I, I need a little bit of a deadline with short fiction sometimes to get it done, so having contest deadlines really helps. I used a contest deadline to get You Know Where Your Body Is Buried edited, and then I'm using the CBC prize to get Landline edited. This was a really fun story to write. It's definitely quite different from me. It's a bit more comic. I actually have a writing vlog that I filmed of me drafting it, so maybe that'll be up at some point. Maybe it already is. Most of it is in like transcripts of phone calls, so it's quite different from, from my normal style because it's really dialogue heavy, a bit co more comic. There's barely any description or internal narrative. And so that's really, I think, something I'm struggling with because I feel like those are the things that I usually use to find depth in my writing is description and internal narrative. And so not really having those things in a story to me makes the story feel really thin. But like maybe I, I do really like the dialogue. I think I have to just like settle with the fact that this is different. That doesn't make it worse. And I have to like find depth in other ways with other tools than I would normally use through more through dialogue, which is not usually my strongest I would say dialogue is the right area of writing that I feel the least confident in and struggle with the most. And so writing a story that's almost all dialogue is obviously a great exercise for me. It's hard for me to feel confident, but I do like aspects of the story and I at the point where I'm kind of like putting aside for a little bit so I can come back to it and do some further revision. I'm also writing a second story that I plan to submit to the CBC Prize. Yesterday, my dad texted me out of nowhere and it was super sweet. And he was just like, wanted to tell you about something that I saw that is burned into my memory because it just brings me so much happiness and makes me feel good about human nature. And he just told me this little anecdote that he'd witnessed and he said that it reminded him of me and my high school friend group. He was totally right, like it really did feel like something that easily could have been. I'm not telling you what it is because it's the end of the last paragraph of the story is this exact anecdote. But it was a really specific but really genuinely like sweet thing. I really felt like it would make the perfect ending to a short story. And I don't know, I've never written auto fiction before. I've never written a short story that is based on me. And I've never felt like there would even be something that I would want to write about for my life. Because usually I just prefer to work on my own stuff internally within myself rather than in fiction. But I don't know, this anecdote just really did get me thinking about my relationships from that age, my friendships from that age. So I'm writing a story that is the situation is not based on, is not autofiction, but the relationships definitely are. And the way that the main character feels about the relationships is definitely very much inspired by myself. My working title for the story is Change for a Dollar. We'll see if it pans out. Writing autofiction honestly is mortifying. How do people do this? Every time I work on the story, I feel nostalgic and sad. I do have one other story that I'm working on, but it's just a really fun concept that I'll talk about in a future update if I have a draft or a title. Two more things I want to talk about in this update. The next thing I want to talk about is my new novel. So I am so excited to say that I'm starting a new novel draft. My new book that I'm writing, I have said this in past videos, is called Salt Birds, and I'm not talking too much about what it's about. I have wanted to start this book since I got the idea, which was last year. I just felt like it was not the time. When I actually started this book, I wanted to be able to actually immerse in it and not have a billion other books that I was currently editing. But now that I'm at the point where Honey Vinegar is like going on submission, I'm at the late stages of editing Holding a Ghost, like that's at the feedback stage, which can be very, very slow. I think it is time for me to start a new novel and I think I'll actually have the time to invest in it. And you know, I do tend to write books 
work on them for a bit, then take a break. So if I need to do a draft of Holding a Ghost, that's that's fine. I will certainly need to do more drafts of Holding a Ghost, but I think the most intensive drafts are out of the way. I think I can I can write this book by like focusing on it deeply for a bit and then maybe working on a short story and then focusing deeply on it for a bit and then maybe doing a draft of Holding a Ghost and then coming back to this novel. So I'm so, so excited to start working on it. I have written the first two chapters that I slowly chipped on for the past year but now I can actually start writing it. And I haven't had a novel to draft other than my fantasy project, but that's a little different because I work on it so sporadically and like I don't really think I'm going to, it's gonna take years to write, which is the point and nope and fine with me. But I haven't really had like a novel to draft that's not a personal project in a year. I'm just so excited to have one again. And there were so many things that I wanted to get done before I could allow myself to start writing this book. I've been like, you know when a dog sees another dog across the park and it just like really wants to go run towards a dog or like sees a squirrel or something and then the owner's like holding the dog back and the dog's like trying so hard to run away. I was both the owner and the dog and the leash and the squirrel across the park. But so I've just been like holding myself back from starting this book and finally I can actually start it. And I just can't say how excited I am because um, I love starting new books and I've been wanting to do this for a year and have a draft that I can like immerse myself in and see that kind of progress and I haven't had that so. Anyways, so the last thing I wanted to talk about was just a quick publication update. My short story, How to Slaughter, is now out in the common. So you can read that online. It is free to read. Uh, just want to give a quick content warning for this story. There is some depictions of animal cruelty and also depictions of an abusive household. So there is like some depictions of verbal and physical abuse, but it's not graphic and it's not directed towards the main character. It's a long one. This is a juicy 7,500 words. This is the longest story that I've ever written and I actually cannot believe that it got published. I put so much work into this story. I literally nicknamed this story The Ship of Theseus because I had edited it so many times and now it is out. And the word on the street that I've heard people saying is that it's my best story. So also with the common, I published a book review in their um, reading recommendation series where contributors can submit book reviews. So if you want to read my book review, it is a review of um, Winter and Sock Show by Elisa Schwad Dusapang. I'm really excited that I got the chance to just talk about one of my favorite books. And then the final thing for publication is that my flash fiction piece, After Hours, which was published in Vagabond City Lit earlier this year, they nominated it for Best of the Net, which I'm so excited about because I've never been nominated for a thing. Ever since I started publishing short stories, my goal has been to be nominated for a thing, and I've never been nominated for a thing. Every year when all the nominations come in for all the prizes, I've never been nominated, and it's always been my dream to just be nominated for a thing. And so shout out to Vagabond City Lit for nominating me for Best of the Net. That story is also uh, just a flash fiction piece, and it's also free to read online. Um, my stuff is always all all linked in the description, but I was very excited about that because I just felt held <laughs> and loved and seen. Hello, so welcome to a little addition because there's been a plot development since I filmed this video, which is that I got another story accepted and the turnaround between it getting accepted and published was really fast, so it's actually already out. So my story Tabula Rasa is out now in the Thames Review. This is one of my favorite stories I've ever written. And I feel like I said that about every story, but genuinely I've written like over 30 short stories, maybe 35 short stories in my life. Like this is a top three, I would say. It is truly a favorite. I'm so proud of it. Ever since I wrote it back in February of 2021, I've been looking forward to the day that I get to share it because I'm just really, really proud of this one. The day that I got accepted by the Thames Review, I withdrew it. And um, when I withdrew it, I got a message from another magazine that I had withdrawn it from saying that they were about to send me an acceptance right when I'd withdrawn it. So, so she is in high demand, but available to read for free online, linked in my description or in my link tree with all my publications, which is in my social media bios. It follows a teenager whose sister went missing a few years before and what happens when her mom lets a hitchhiker move into her sister's old bedroom. I think one of my favorite things I've ever written just because the voice is so teenage, you know, like the main character is the definition of a self-absorbed, <laughs> arrogant teenager who thinks she knows everything and thinks she is so mature even though she is 15 and doesn't know a thing about the world. And it was really, really fun and I really, really enjoyed writing a character who 
is the character where the reader is going to be a lot more perceptive of this character than the character herself. That was really, really fun to write. Probably my favorite aspect of writing this story was writing a character who's really funny because she's so arrogant but can't see the pain under that that selfishness and under that humor that was just really unique and a different type of voice than I've written before but one of my favorite stories I've ever written so I'm really really excited that it's out now so that's all for this video guys as always in my reading updates I just want to hear what you guys have been working on lately I want to hear about your wins or your struggles it doesn't really matter just whatever you're working on please tell me about it because I really do love to hear it so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video